I's dotted. Uh, yeah. So we can uh, make sure we put on a good show on this weekend. Talk to me. What y'all guys got? Yeah, Brian Cameron with the Courier Journal. Um, obviously, UCF, another kind of up-tempo, fast-paced offense, similar to Ole Miss. How much do you learn from the Ole Miss film that you think can help you guys against Central Florida on Friday? Well, I think the, the first and foremost thing is that, uh, you know, our guys understand now that uh, they can't try to see too much, okay, and that they got to make sure they get all cleats in the ground, 11 cleats in the ground in order for us to execute and see what we're supposed to see and and not try to see – Every every swinging thing that's that's on the football field, and uh, and I think that's what's going to help us this coming up weekend, and uh, that the guys understand. Hey, listen, you know we preached it and preached it going into the Ole Miss game, uh, but I think once you get into that game type environment, uh, reality sets in, and it's like, oh, it is going really really fast. So we got to get the call. Uh, we got to see, you know, see what we're supposed to see immediately, and uh, and just line up and play. So I think that's going to help us right, right there, Cameron, uh, going from game one to game uh, game number three. And, uh, and I think we made strides in that last, last week, even with EKU trying to go fast a couple of times. So that helped us. Brian, this is Kit with WHAS 11. Are you just kind of referring to there's a lot of things that, that your defenders are looking at as far as what the offense is doing pre-snap? You just need to focus on what you're supposed to be looking at? Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's the biggest thing is, you know, our guys, uh, they're, they're, they're really sharp kids. And, uh, you know, and, and we give them tips and reminders and things where, hey, in this certain formation, these are some of the things they like. And I think uh, that first game, they, they try to see every formation, every every uh, every key. Uh, they're looking at motions where they're not supposed to look at motions. They're looking at, uh, you know, zone read concepts when they are wall carrier, should be wall carrier number two receiver. And that's when it was hitting the pop pass on us. Uh, so we just got to do our job next year, and, and we did a better job of that on this past Saturday, and uh, hopefully we can continue that and be a lot better from game two to game three uh, coming Friday night. Hey, Brian, it's Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. Um, obviously, UCF has a really good quarterback in Dylan Gabriel. What kind of challenges does he present, number one? And two, having faced a, a similar style QB in Matt Corral, like, can you draw any lessons from that game and kind of apply it to the UCF game? Well, number one, Matt. Uh, master Heisman Trophy candidate. I mean, that that kid is. Uh, I mean, he he's unbelievable. I mean, he he may be one of the best that I've gone against personally. Um, you know, since I've been coaching, and uh, he knew where to go with the ball immediately. You know, once he saw what he needed to see, uh, quick release, and uh, he was on point with every single ball. You know, besides some of the ones that we batted. Uh, so he's he's a no doubt an NFL quarterback. Uh, I think uh, Dylan. Uh, is similar uh, to a certain extent. And Dylan is a veteran quarterback that's seen a lot, uh, very poised in the, in the pocket. Uh, he does scramble to throw the football as well, and he will pull that football down and run, just like Matt will. So they are, there are a lot of similarities uh, within it. I think the schemes are a little bit similar, but not not necessarily so because, uh, you know, Coach Miles on, he, he most definitely wants to run the football first uh, than, than throwing the football. So, uh, But Dylan poses a, a great threat as well, man. He's a be a, He'll be another good quarterback we face, uh, you know, the first two out of three games. You know, you think about – Ole Miss's offense right now, I think they're number four in the country, and this offense we're going against the number two in the country. I told Coach Seth, man, you're making my hair it's even grayer, man. And just, you know, we're going up against these type teams. But a uh, great challenge we look forward to. Hey, Brian, Michael McCam, I'm from Cardinal Authority. Um, tell me about that Yaya and how his progression has been this year. You know, there was a lot of ex expectations for him coming in this year, which probably isn't fair. Uh, but what do you what do you think about his performance through two games as well as Ashton, uh, you know, playing behind him? Well, I think with Yaya, man, uh, uh, you know, we, we hardly ever talk about uh, we try not to talk about injuries. And uh, and I think leading up into that first game, uh, he, he was dealing with a lot of back issues and, you know, uh, you know, having to sit out a little bit, you know, practice wise and and, you know, dealing with some things as far as uh, hydration goes as well. But going into that first game, he, he had some real back issues that he was dealing with. Uh, so I think right now he's getting back to uh, shape uh, and form to where, you know, he can be a, a, as dominant force as what we're, we're hoping for him to be in that first game. Uh, but I think just, it's just health-wise with him early on, and, uh, and I think he's back to where he needs to be. Uh, but he, he's going to be fine, and we look forward to big things for him. Uh, I think uh, Ashton, uh, I mean, he's he's performing above our expectations. 
Uh, is doing really, really well. He was probably one of the bright spots of that Ole Miss game up front. Uh, did a great job for us and, of course, got a sack this past week. Uh, he's just a kid, man, that wants to do everything that you ask him to do uh, and do it to the best of his ability and do it exactly the way you want it to be done. And uh, so we're excited to have him, and I uh, hope we can continue to have him for the next three years and uh, him not try to leave early. <laughs> hey, hey, Brian, two questions for you. One, on Trey Clark, was Saturday the most physical you've seen him play in his time in Louisville? Uh, and and two, you mentioned the similarities between um, UCF and Ole Miss. It seemed like the Ole Miss game, like you guys were letting them have some – you didn't want to give the big play. You were letting them have stuff inside, but missing tackles that sprung to big plays. Mm-hmm. you feel like you guys have helped clean clean that up a little bit since then? Yes, I'll start with your second uh, second part of your question. Uh, yes, we, we, we didn't want to give up the big play. And, you know, looking at their film the previous year, uh, that's the one thing that they wanted. Every Almost every single play was, was a deep shot. And, uh, you know, and that's one thing we practiced a lot was not giving up the big play, letting them have some things underneath. Uh, but when you let them have things underneath, you got to tackle. And, and those are some of the big plays we had. Uh, and like I told you earlier, some of the eye control things we had in the back end that we're not uh, you, we're, we're doing other people's job as opposed to our own. And uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, we've most definitely learned from that. And, you know, Ole Miss ended up doing some things where they wanted to uh, go a lot, uh, a little bit wider splits than what they shown on film. And, and, uh, and that caused us little problems there and uh, uh, and wanted a lot of things underneath. And uh, talking to those guys, that's, that's some of the things they told me. Uh, that they wanted to do because they knew we wouldn't want to give up the big shot. And that's something that they struggled with last year was drop eight. And uh, so they did a lot of research and trying to figure out what was the best way to attack drop eights. And uh, I thought they did a really good job and uh, uh, we just didn't execute uh, as well. Uh, Trey Clark, on the other hand, uh, yes, I think that's probably one of the most physical games he's played. And uh, he was on point, you know, and he was even on point the Ole Miss game. You know, uh, the times they came his way, you know, he was right there, made plays. Uh, and even on tackles, you know, I don't think he had a missed tackle in the Ole Miss game. Uh, but I think he's, he's just locked in right now, man. He's on a mission, and uh, and I think he's on a mission to be one of the best corners in the country, and hopefully we can continue that this coming weekend. It's time for one more, guys. Hey, Brian, uh, one last quick one for me. Uh, obviously, uh, we know what Gabriel can do, but you mentioned that Coach Bazan likes to run the ball a lot. And through the first couple of games, Isaiah Bowser, they're a good running back, starting to really put himself on the map. Uh, what kind of challenges does he present knowing that the defensive line for Louisville is kind of struggling a bit as of right now? Uh, I don't know if they're – we're just struggling a little bit as of right now uh, in the run game. I think we did a pretty good job this past week, uh, you know, stopping the run. Uh, you know, I think that first game, you know, like I said, they uh, we were just, you know, backers fitting wrong gaps and things of that nature. I thought the D-line did okay, just not it's getting pressure on the quarterback, uh, number one. Uh, but, you know, I think Bowser, man, he's just uh, – uh, he's a big kid that can freaking run downhill, you know. He does a really good job in his zone schemes and even some of their counter and uh, um, power things that he knows. He's a veteran guy that came from Northwestern has played a lot of football. Uh, he knows, you know, how to read defenses and how to read the – the D-line on where they're uh, moving this way as the A-gap close. If A-gap close, I go to B, A, B to C uh, on certain schemes. So uh, he's a veteran guy that's downhill that uh, that I think is uh, fits exactly what Coach Malzahn uh, wants to do offensively, uh, especially with some of the backs he's had in the past uh, at running back in, in this offense. So uh, he's a really good back to pose a, a problems for any any defense uh, that they play. Okay. I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all have a good one, okay? Appreciate it, Brian. All right. You too, Coach.